Hi everyone, Donut here. When's the last time I did a Liar Liar Pants on Fire? When's the last time I did a Canadian shooting? Have I ever done a Canadian shooting? These are the questions that we must ask ourselves sometimes. So I was browsing the old Twitter today because frankly, I don't value my mental health or sanity when I came across a post that had almost 18,000 retweets and 31,000 likes. Boy, that's viral if I've ever seen viral. This tweet read, my stepdad was murdered by the Calgary police two days ago. My dad was sitting down and they released a canine on him. They killed him over a dog and they let him bleed out and die on the street for eight hours. Words cannot describe my pain. It was followed up by another tweet that reads, my dad had mental health issues. He had PTSD because of the war back in Sudan and because he was forced to be a child soldier. Imagine coming to a country promised a better life, but you're met with racism, rejection, and ultimately death. I am so angry right now. I saw this and I thought to myself, that's absolutely terrible. This guy was a child soldier in Sudan 20 years ago and understandably has some mental health issues from it. Upon reading this, the detective part of my brain started saying, hey, I bet him having mental health issues probably led up to this shooting incident we're about to go over. Some details that I also want to point out that our original tweeter said in the viral tweet. Well, I just went to read it and they have uh, blocked me from their page. Good thing screenshots exist. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's pretty big, but here are some things. My stepdad was murdered by the police. They shot him dead execution style five times while he was sitting down and proceeded to leave his dead body on the street for eight hours. They released a dog on him and he tried defending himself like anybody would do out of pure instinct and they fired round after round into his body. They came with their weapons drawn and multiple officers and a canine unit. And for what? One singular black man who has a stick. They're spitting out lies and saying they tried reasoning with him, plus claiming he had a weapon that they won't specify because it was a stick. Calgary police, you guys are incompetent trigger happy pigs. This was police brutality and you guys effed up. The video proof does not lie. A cab until I die. Okay, the video proof does not lie. Let's watch some of the video proof. <laughs> That's a knife, which is a deadly weapon. Naturally, with me being a rational human being who doesn't believe a fucking thing I see on the internet, I started researching this incident, and this is what I found. Before we go any further, I want to point out that I deal in facts. Big facts. You know this. I try to stay as unbiased as possible. I try to take these facts and lay them out in front of you so that you can make your own judgments about situations like this. So let's see what I found on the Google box. With how viral this incident is, I figured I was gonna be able to find more than three clips, but I think that these three clips clear up what happened. I also found what the Canadian government is saying about this incident on their official website. I know that the Canada government is not exactly the most trusted government in the world right now, but everything that they said in their statement is backed up by video evidence. According to our original poster though, police have been taking down the video footage which doesn't make sense seeing as how it's straight evidence of what appears to be a justified shooting. According to Kanata, at around 3.40 p.m., police got a call that there was a man walking around with a stick and a knife and that he had struck an innocent passerby with his stick. At the time, no one knew that the suspect was having a mental health crisis, only that a dude with a deadly weapon was walking around being really dangerous. Police arrived on scene and tried to get him to drop the weapon so that they could speak to him. He wouldn't listen to police, so they hit him with some rubber baton rounds and he still wouldn't drop them. The suspect rushes a police dog and officer tries tries to tase him, and he ends up stabbing the police dog in the neck with a knife, critically wounding the dog who had to be later rushed to the Bork Bork Hospital. So the suspect ran towards the canine, stabbed it, then tried to go towards the police. This is when two officers discharged their service weapons, fatally striking him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you, guy! Dude, you're a fucking idiot, man! Oh! You just shot him, man! You fucking idiot! About one minute and 45 seconds go by, then police administer emergency aid. It wasn't eight hours like our original poster said. He's probably dead, bro. 
<laughs> hey, check his pulse before you arrest him. I don't think he's breathing. I hope the dog's okay, though. I feel for the young lady who lost her stepfather, but basically everything that you saw in this video corroborated with the statements from the Kanata police. Uh, she absolutely lied about everything. If you watch carefully after what I think are the first two gunshots, he switches the pole to his left hand and the knife to his right hand. The Alberta Serious Injury Response Team tweeted this out not too long ago. Investigation continues and the Calgary police officer involved shooting causing death. As you can see, that is a big folding knife and the stick that he was holding. I absolutely have no problem with the family starting a GoFundMe to try to get his body back to Sudan, but everything in the description of the GoFundMe is an absolute lie. The GoFundMe is up to 58,000 Canada's and there's a lot that is absolutely false in here. The Calgary PD is trying to spin the story to fit their narrative. They said he had a weapon when he was only carrying a stick that was clearly shown in multiple videos of my father's execution. They say he attacked a police dog, but they left out that they sicked this killer dog on him while he was clearly suffering. They chose to release the canine on him while he was already on the ground. When he tried to defend himself against the canine and run, Calgary PD started shooting. Calgary PD is refusing to talk, but they won't be able to lie their way out of this. There are videos and photos. Speaking of the Calgary Police Department staying quiet about this as I was making this video, the police chief released this. I've cut this press brief down to the meat and the potatoes of the incident. If you actually want to listen to the whole thing, I will gladly put it in the description and comments below. Shortly after 3.40 p.m. on Saturday, CPS officers responded to calls, three calls in fact, from different members of the public concerned for their safety after they encountered a man with a stick and a knife on a public street. An innocent passerby had allegedly been struck with the stick. The responding officers located the subject of the complaint, who they would later learn to be Mr. Tool. They attempted to communicate with him from a safe distance for a significant period of time. He ignored the direction of police and refused to surrender those weapons. They had non-lethal options available at the scene. This included baton rounds fired through a launcher, as well as a conducted energy weapon, which we often hear referred to as a taser. At a point during the negotiations, officers trained in the use of the R1 attempted to temporarily incapacitate the man and separate him from those weapons. Several videos were uploaded to social media where you can hear the R1 being deployed two times. The man was undeterred by the Arwen projectiles and very quickly advanced towards our officers who were standing at a safe distance near their police vehicles. One officer deployed their taser. It too failed to stop his progress. Several officers and a police dog were standing near a police vehicle. The dog remained on a leash and was under the control of his handler. The man quickly advanced toward the officers, attacking the service dog with a large stick and then stabbing it with the knife. PSD Jack was stabbed to the neck. He was rushed to emergency veterinary clinic where he underwent surgery to repair his wounds. While attacking the dog, the man continued to move toward the officers. Two officers discharged their service weapons, striking the man. If you would like to donate to a cause that isn't a lie though, I would take my money over to Canines of Valor. I just personally donated $10,000 to them to help buy stab proof vests for Bork Borks who belong to departments that can't afford them. I could go through all the Twitter comments and show you the madness which is unfolding, calling the police racist and saying that they murdered this man. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather go over to twitch.tv slash donut operator, do some streaming, play some Tarkov. You can come there too if you want to help support the channel. Well, I'm going to head on over there. As always, everyone, please have a fantastic day.